Okay. Can you and can you tell me tell us the story of you getting into a fight over uh, a Tupac bootleg? Oh my God, that leaked. <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah, I almost got killed over oh, a Tupac no. bootleg. I had a machine gun put in my face, <gasps> man. But I was still defending him. I'm like, fuck it, do what you. I just manned up, do what you got to do. I, this is what we say. How do your business? I can't run. This motherfucker got thirty shots in it. Yeah. So I'm gonna just man up and take this shit. So you ain't gonna shoot me in my back. Mm. Handle your handles, bruh. You know. But it was, it was in my car, and my security at the time, you know, used my car, and uh, you know he's a hood nigga. You know what I mean? And he took the, you know, took my car and took the CD, took the CD out and let his homeboys hear. Home. Let me get a copy of that. Cool. You know, but I was fancy because back then everybody didn't have CD burners and mm -hmm. shit used to cost five grand. So I'm in the studio proofreading and listening to these mixes, making sure that they sound good. And I would give Suge a CD or Pac a CD. Like, you know, it was like I was a little pressing plant in that hole. That was before it was popular. Mm. Um, the CD got up, you know, it ended up in the neighborhood at Earthquake Sounds, you know, car shop or whatever. And dudes up there called, um, Suge was like, Hey man, you know, uh, the niggas up here playing the new Tupac shit y'all in there working on. He's like, what? Hmm. What? So I get a call. Hey man, come up to the to the office. And I already know them death row meetings. When they when they call you random, like 420, hey, fight traffic, get up here. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be some bullshit. Hmm. I already know. So we get up there and we confront it. And then uh a fight started in the fucking death row. It was it was scrapping and shit, right? So after the fight was done. My dumb ass, I'm like, man, we just got accused of something we didn't do. I'm like, what did you do, man? He's like, man, I didn't, what? I'm like, who did you give the seat? Man, it's this guy, right? So we go over to this guy's house. I'm like, man, let me, you know, I'm sitting up there. I'm mad because, you know, mm -hmm. niggas is like, you know, we just got into a fist of cuffs about this shit. Yeah. Um, you know, and I never shared this story before, you know, because this, this, this shit might get me into another fight, but at this point, I don't care. Um, I'm like, you know, this guy did it. So he's talking to us. He came down the street. He's talking to me and Donnell and shit, you know, about the, 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 the tape. He didn't do it. Yada, yada, yada. Somebody else did it. So me and my infinite wisdom, I take off on him. Like I'm just, I'm, you know, it's some bullshit. I got to fight somebody because we just got into a fight over here. You don't know what just happened. So I fight the dude and uh, he dropped his Hennessy. And I think he was more mad they dropped his Hennessy of than, than the, you know, me actually swinging on him or whatever. So he told his homeboy, he said, man, blast this motherfucker. And my man just pull out a tech. I just cold. Mm. Like, mm. oh, I'm dead over this dumbass Tupac tape. Mm. Right? So my man didn't shoot me. My security got the gun from him. It was like, y'all just go head up. So I'm fighting with this guy. You know, then I end up fighting with the other guy. And the other guy kicked me all in the head and shit. I'm on the ground getting stomped and shit. I get up and I'm still fighting this guy. And it's like, man, I can't fight, bro. Help me fight these motherfuckers. Why mm. you got me out here fighting two people? You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and then we had to go to a party that night still, oh, like a whispers God. party that Death Row was throwing. So we end up at the whispers party and shit. And he's like, wow. You know what I'm saying, man? Boo wham. You all right? You all right? Yeah, we cool. We cool. You know what I'm saying? He was like, no, y'all not cool. Y'all need to go to the house. No, we cool. Fuck it. It's charged to the game. But it was, it was supposedly the guy that did it. I ended up making amends with him. I went and hung out with him a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and apologized, you know, cause I shouldn't have did that. Um, but you know, it was, um, you know, Death Row was the single most dangerous record company in the world. But if you had on the chain, nothing ever happened to you. It's like an amulet. <laughs> yeah, we had a DOC on, and he said that. Good luck charm. Uh, yeah, DOC wow. said he he <laughs> he said that Death Row for him was more volatile than being locked up in jail. Because there was a lot of guys that was locked up in jail working for Death Row. Yeah, you know.